My big news is that I just found out, as I was preparing for this talk, actually, that I'm going to become a grandfather. And if you would, each and every, every one of you, for just one moment, um, think of your grandparents. And I'm going to guess that just about every one of you has a memory of how they encouraged you. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is the power you have, the incredible power you have to do good for people with encouragement and love. I want to start off uh, with a couple of quotes. Uh, one of them, the only constant in life is change. How many of you have heard that just by a show of hands? Okay. I would say that 75, 80% of you have heard that quote. 10% of you were too tired to raise your hand and don't respond when people ask for things like that. <laughs> so I'm going with 95%. Um, the only constant in life is change. Comes from a guy named Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher, about 500 BC. And yet you're walking around with that in your head today. But did he tweet it? <laughs> How did it get to you? Here's another one. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Who says that? How many of you have heard that? Show of hands. I'm going with 100% that time, because less of you were lazy, I embarrassed you last time. And just about everybody has heard that. Uh, that's Ralph Waldo Emerson, near as I could find in the early 1800s. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, those two things kind of, you know, constant change, and the more things change, the more they stay the same. And this fascinates me because we live in this most amazing time, all right? Everybody's talking about technology and the world. We think of the whole world, uh, and we see maps of the world, and we want to fix poverty, and we want all human beings to be happy, but we also want our nice uh, quality of life that we have. And, uh, and some of us have jobs threatened by the internet, and some of us are embarking on exciting new careers made possible by the internet. So what does all of that mean? Well, I'm in the media. And I don't say radio because I'm on the radio, but I'm in a band. I uh, do comedy, I sell records, I, I do anything in media, I'm here. I have a Facebook page. Don't kid yourself. Facebook is your radio station. That's your media page. That's where you broadcast the stuff you care about to your family and friends. I have, I have some really cool friends. Uh, being in this business has allowed me to meet interesting and amazing people. And sometimes I ask them if they want to have lunch with me. And sometimes they say yes. Uh, one such friend is a neurobiologist, uh, brain scientist at University of Washington. His name is John Medina. If you can, read his book, Brain Rules, it's brilliant. He and I were talking about this crazy time we live in, and the media, and the texting, and the social networking, and all of the fast ways our lives are changing, and, and we're communicating, and what does it all mean? And I said, is our brain evolving? Because I think I'm learning how to text, walk down the sidewalk, I'm learning how to check eight things at once, I've got this big, huge, busy media life. He said, no. Evolution doesn't happen that fast. What's happening is your external is changing, your exterior is changing, your environment is changing. The tools you have are changing at the fastest pace in the history of man because of technology. The brain you and I have, roughly the same brain that man had 200,000 years ago. What an amazing time. 200,000 years, the same brain. We're not evolving, but we're growing and changing super fast. And sometimes that change is scary, isn't it? What I want to tell you about is the power you have to do good and, and, and change people with love and encouragement. And my good news was that I am about to be a grandfather this August, I found out. 
And I'd like to show you my grandpa. That's him, John F. Bruce. Give him a round of applause. If there is something up there, he's watching me right now and helping me, and if there isn't, it still feels cool, doesn't it? That's my grandpa, John F. Bruce, and that's me, I'm five. How many people know what they want to be when they were five? I did. And you know why? My grandpa bought me my first transistor radio. I discovered music, I discovered personalities, I discovered humor, and the next thing he did is he taught me how to use the telephone. My two favorite things, by the way, the radio and the phone. Third thing Grandpa did is he said something amazing to me one day. I had just started, I think this is about six years old, because he passed away when I was seven, and that picture is when I was five. I came to him, I was a little bit annoyed, uh, as many six-year-olds are, <laughs> that you've suddenly been sentenced to what seems like life in prison. You may know of it as school. And I went to my grandpa and I said, Grandpa, I don't want to go to school. And he said, Robbie, because I hadn't become Bob yet. Bob's a cooler radio name, I think. But he said, Robbie, he said, you're so lucky. You're lucky you get to school. You know why? Because learning is the most important thing you'll ever do. And you're lucky you get to learn. And, and I said, if it's so good and it's so important, why don't... Adults have to go to school. <laughs> and you know what he said? He said, they should. He said, you're smart. They should. In fact, my grandma, grandfather in about 18 ways told me I was smart, and I vowed that I would keep learning my whole life and keep learning new things, and that as long as I got to be alive and live and breathe and be on this planet, that I would be curious and want to know things, which is why today I am proud to call myself a beekeeper, instrument-rated pilot, musician, disc jockey, substitute teacher, boat captain, chicken farmer, talk show host. <laughs> it's my grandpa. This is me, young Bob at age 22. Or that's a scene from that 70s show. I can't really <laughs> be sure. This is me, music Bob. Uh, they mentioned I, I've done comedy records on Atlantic Records. and. I always loved music so much that I, I did that just so I could stay in it and produce. And, and I made the song sound exactly like the original. And then this is me with the band Heart by Heart with two members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where I get to play those cool songs and sound just like the original. I couldn't see where all this encouragement of giving me a radio and teaching me the phone would go. What's that? It was not made by the professor on Gilligan's Island, though it looks like it could have been. That's the very first world's digital camera, okay? Made by Scott Sasson, a guy at HP, uh, not HP, uh, Kodak, excuse me. You know, Kodak had a monopoly on photography. In fact, if you took a picture, you know what they called it? A Kodak moment, right? He made that camera in 1975, right around the same time I was in that 70s show. Oh, never mind, I'm not gonna go back for it. He made that in 1975, and Kodak kind of freaked out because they really kind of were in the film business. And he said, oh, don't worry, Moore's Law means it'll be, it was a .01 megapixel, really crappy pictures. He said, Moore's Law means it'll be maybe mid-90s before it's, you know. The good news for Kodak is they had a long time to sell film. Their last profitable year was 2006, and they went bankrupt in 2012. So the internet scares some people. Scares radio a little bit, too, because... <laughs> I know. Scared Radio Shack. That's Radio Shack, by the way, which got so embarrassed in 2009, they removed radio from their name. It didn't work. Uh, people still didn't have any idea what they did. I went in there once looking for a radio. <laughs> you know what's funny is they don't sell radios, but they sell these. So I have a question for you. If this isn't a radio, hold on, how does the stuff get to it? <laughs> there are no strings like Pinocchio. I submit to you my two favorite things that my grandpa taught me 50 years ago, the phone and the radio. 
Two mints. Two mints in one. <laughs> All right. I have a little more. Thank you for being so nice. <laughs> so uh, what business am I in? Well, I'm in radio, but radio's on the internet now. That's iHeartRadio, Clear Channel's internet app, an amazing platform uh, that, you know, they have a, a music festival, they have uh, now music awards that are gonna be broadcast on NBC TV this year. iHeartRadio has 800 stations just from Clear Channel and all these other things. And it's, on, it's a button on a lot of your car radios. So that's traditional radio on the internet. Oh, by the way, the other thing they have better than anybody else is they have all the radio personalities. But hey, I'm open-minded. There's all kinds of radio. You know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. This is iTunes radio, where you can make a radio station based on your favorite artist. <laughs> My favorite artist is me in this particular instance. It has a little knob on it for hits, variety, and discovery. So you can sort of tell it how, you know, how broad you want it to be. That's interesting. I think you're going to see more things like that. But I also think you'll, you know, where's the DJ? Hang on. Here's Pandora. Oh, wait a minute. It was originally a jewelry company. Uh, here's Pandora. There we go. That's the planet that Avatar was filmed on. No, that's not what I was looking for. Try one more time. Ah, that's Pandora Internet Radio. But let me say something. That's another one of these, and I love them, by the way. Uh, that's another one of these internet things with algorithms to you, interpret, you put in what you like and don't like, and it tells you, you know, what kind of music you want to hear, and it plays you a made-up radio station. But again, Pandora also seems to disavow any connection with a real human being of any kind. In fact, here in their Christmas ad, you can see they wouldn't even give Santa Claus any FaceTime. <laughs> Just his hat. Spotify is another one. Spotify is kind of cool because it's like Napster in that you get to download and keep music on your, what I call my nifty new radio. And uh, so it's like a legal Napster. I, you pay nine bucks a month for that. I, I, I like that. And I think they'll all eventually move to that kind of a subscription model. But you know what? The more things change, the more they stay the same. And the only constant in life is change. And that's just some of the radio stations available on the internet. You would think us in broadcast radio would be pretty scared, wouldn't we? Good thing we have people. In 1975, uh, back when I, my That 70s picture was taken, broadcast radio had 93% of the public in America listening to it today. What do you think it is eroded to today? Just take a wild guess. 93%. <laughs> so I'm excited because that stuff is happening. And yes, it's challenging. And, and you know, uh, the disc jockey doesn't have a new out. Maybe, the, maybe it's Facebook. Maybe it's YouTube. Where people get a chance to uh, be on a farm team and grow and try stuff out. And maybe have a hit and become popular. I want you to guess what that is. Take all the time you need. <laughs> okay, no, I, you're being very, it must be a trick question. Uh, that's an old radio, but that's not the answer I was looking for. That's a Tesla. You see, back in my grandfather's day, that was a huge company that made radios. radios. They called it Tesla named after this guy Tesla who made the Tesla coil and all sorts of scientific radio wave stuff, all right? But this is today, it's not the same company, but this is Tesla. They make a bitch in radio <laughs> that comes with an electric car. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same, but the only constant is change. Why do I tell you all this stuff? Well, name something extinct really quickly. What? Ooh, did anybody say buggy whip? That's what I was hoping for. 
So I'm going to go on as if you had. If the buggy whip is something you use to make your vehicle go faster, didn't it simply evolve into a gas pedal? Isn't it exciting to see how things change and yet they stay the same? It's our environment, as I mentioned earlier, that's evolving. We're not. I want to come back to my grandpa. The radio and the phone gave me the passion and inspiration to last my whole life. And I'm so grateful he was such a positive guy. And now I'm about to become a grandpa, so you know what I'm thinking. I can have effect beyond my lifetime. which is kind of cool, I think. I don't know why as humans, we, that's important. So I got one more picture for you. So I went to, the, uh, I went to Google Images, which is a fun uh, little toy. And I Google imaged cave drawings. And I thought, how is that not Fred Flintstone's Facebook page? <laughs> And you know what, they, they even posted pictures of their food like we do. <laughs> and, and I half expected to see at the bottom, if you like buffalo, you might also like fish. <laughs> Folks, the more things change, the more they stay the same. But you know what really matters? These are what the media is. These are all people giving to other people and trying to have lasting meaning and trying to, as I think I said on my first card, which I will quickly find, oh, trying to use their, their power of influence to do good. Trying to give love and encouragement to other people, to show them where the buffalo are. Media and the human brain, the environment around them has changed, but we're the same people we've been for hundreds of thousands of years. And so as I become a grandfather, I think, I'm gonna use whatever I got in me to try and spread that. Remember that uh, Heraclitus, you walk around quoting him today. That's cool. Maybe you should set, try and say something to someone that 500 years from now they'll quote. Like in 500 years, maybe somebody will say, well, that was a flash in a pan. Yeah, that sure was Gangnam style. <laughs> I had a dirtier joke, but I went with that one. <laughs> Folks, thank you for letting me into your cars in the morning. Thank you for inviting me here. I'm really, really honored. And uh, please, do good, be good, and have a wonderful life.